well. I'm afraid he's badly hurt. No chance of saving him? I don't know. I hope so. I've sent to the vet. If the doctor says so, Andy, that's all there is to it. But it's Epsom I'm worried about. Really, I am. Forget it. And you take it easy for a while. A strained shoulder is a slow business, and worrying won't help. But I don't want to let you down, Captain. You won't let me down, Andy. I know that. Has he any better news today? Afraid not. He doesn't like the look of him at all. I see. It's hopeless. Well, we shall know more in a day or so, but I can't say I'm very optimistic. Poor old wilderness. It would have to be him. Oh, you have other horses, you know. Not a patch on wilderness. What about my darling? Well, what about her? She's come on wonderfully lately. She's there, too. I believe that when I see it. You come to the gallops tomorrow, and you will. All right, it's a date, and I'll bring John Dory as a witness. Good morning, Molly. Hello. I know you, Mr. Dory, is quite awake yet. Bookmakers aren't supposed to get up at six o'clock in the morning. Can you tell me why I've done it? Yes, to see my darling do a trial gallop. Is my darling that scraggly little three-year-old that came in last at Epsom? Yes, but Molly says she's improved out of all recognition. But she isn't any faster than the others. Don't be silly, Harry hasn't let her out yet. Now, look. I can't believe it's the same animal. You ever see anything move any better? <laughs> Almost <laughs> worth getting up for. You've done wonders with them, Molly. You really have. Thank you, Gary. <laughs> Captain Gary Anson. Sorry I'm late. Mm. Now that Captain Anson is here, yeah. we can begin. <clears throat> This is the last will and testament of me, Bertha Anson of Mayfield, in the county of Berkshire. I hereby revoke all former wills and codicils made by me and declare this to be my last will. In these days of high taxation and death duties, I am opposed to our great estates being split up, and I therefore leave my house, Mayfield, together with all my personal estate and effects whatsoever, and everything of which I die possessed, to my nephew, Gary Anson and I direct that he shall allow each of the relatives whose names are set out below to select from the contents of Mayfield one article of furniture or jewellery to the value not exceeding 20 pounds as a personal memento of me. There follows a list of names. It includes each one of you here today. There is a codicil to the will. It is dated March the 27th of this year and is in the handwriting of the deceased. It reads, I hereby revoke all the bequests made above and give and bequeath everything of which I die possessed to the General Hospital Fund of 27 Westminster Square, Westminster, with the exception only of my pearl necklace, more generally known as the Anson Pearls, and valued at £20,000. This I give and bequeath to my nephew, Gary Anson, on the strict understanding that he does not part with it but regards it as a last means of livelihood when he reaches the condition of impoverishment to which I am convinced his habit of betting on racehorses will one day reduce him. When that time comes, I counsel him to sell the necklace and invest the proceeds in government bonds so that he may escape the complete poverty he so richly deserves. Hello, Gary. How did everything go? Come in and I'll tell you over a drink. Ah, oh, it's you. Like a nice cuppa? No, a nice cocktail. One of your specials. Okay, Doc. I'd prefer that myself. You will give him notice before we're married, won't you? I'm always giving him notice. But he doesn't go. And he's always giving me notice. We take it in turn. He's a terrible servant. He's so impertinent. He's not a servant at all, really. He's a souvenir. He used to be my batman. He wasn't really a burglar once, was he? Yes, of course. That's how we met. He tried to burgle me. And he's a first-rate forger, too. No, I don't think I could ever do without old Hillcock. Well, keep him on if you have to, but out of my sight. I want a really good butler. My dear, I don't think we'll be able to afford it. What do you mean? There wasn't any surprise about the will, was there? 
No, not as far as I was concerned, because I didn't expect anything. I only got the pearls and a telling off my misspent youth. The hospital's got the rest. Right. Does it really make so much difference? I don't know whether you know it, Gary, but there are two kinds of women. Yes, of course there are. You and all the others. <laughs> no, I mean women who can do without money and women who can't. I'm one of the ones who can't. It's awful, it's contemptible, but there it is. Wenda, what are you trying to say? Gary, darling, I love you much too much not to be frank with you. I love you and I want to marry you. But I can't now. There'll have to be somebody else. Someone who isn't poor. I better go. No, 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 don't go yet. You, you haven't had a drink. Would you like to see the pearls? Yes, I would. Oh, Gary, they're lovely. Lovely. They make me wish still more I was marrying you. Why? So that I could wear them, of course. Well, you can if you like. Don't be silly. No, no, I mean it. My old aunt left them to me as a sort of ultimate nest egg, not to be sold until I'd lost my shirt backing horses. Well, there's no point now in leaving them in some bank. So if you want to, you can wear them until I need them. You don't mean it. Yes, I do. Here, let me put them on for you. There. They're beautiful. It's the setting that's beautiful. <laughs> but I don't like taking them. Well, you're not taking them. You're only mining them for me. Don't worry, they're insured. But oughtn't I to give you a receipt or something? Why, I can trust you, can't I? Of course. Well, then that's understood. You keep them and wear them as a reminder of me until I go broke and need them. Or until you get married to someone else. Oh, don't worry. That'll never happen. I hope the other doesn't either. So do I. But if it does, I'll be around for the pearls. OK? All right. Oh, Gary. Oh, no, darling. That's over for us now. Here we are, girl. Yes, yeah, it's about time, too. <laughs> this is about so NATO special. At least I think it is. By the way, Wenda, who is this somebody else that you'll marry now? Oh, Willie, I suppose. He's the best bet. In fact, he's the only bet. Not Willie Paniford. Yes, Willie Paniford. That's what your horrid old aunt has done to me. Well, well, here's to the future Lady Paniford. But honestly, Wenda, I can hardly believe it. Of all the people in the world, Willie. Ned! Willie, that's game and set. Oh. Five are on each set, five are on the match. That's 15 quid you owe me. You know, I don't think we all play this game for money. Oh, I do. She always wins. Well, that's the idea. It's a small income, but it's regular, and I should miss it. You know, you're going to miss a lot of things, old boy, after I get married. Wendell doesn't approve of you. <laughs> I don't think you'll be staying with me quite so often. My dear fellow, how very inconvenient. Willie, what on earth made you decide to do this awful thing? Why do you call it an awful thing? Oh, too expensive, you mean? My dear fellow, it's life imprisonment. Ha-ha! <laughs> I've got the jolly pretty jailer. up. <laughs> you know, I always thought she'd marry Gary Hanson. No, she told me the idea never entered her head. Did you have much trouble persuading her to marry you? No, curious enough, very little. Mind you, I really put my back into it. You might say I, uh, I slipped off her feet. Oh, I wish I'd been there. By the way, I, I can't ask you to be best man, I'm afraid. Wenda wants to have Gary. <laughs> What's the joke? I don't think you'd see it, old boy. <laughs> and speaking as one who is not unaccustomed to tying the knot, if I may say so, I consider it a rare and beautiful thing to see such a happy and contented couple. May they live long and happily in our midst. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the toast. The bride and bridegroom. Speech, speech! Yes, speech, oh, yes. speech, 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 Ladies and gentlemen, I, uh, I, I, I've never done this sort of thing before. I mean, I, uh, my, my wife and I would like to thank you for your kindness for us and your best wishes, and for, um, well, we thank you. Do you mind very much? Mind what? Today. Everything? I haven't the faintest idea what you're talking about. Oh, yes, you have. Why did you let her marry Willie? What's wrong with Willie? Everything. Well, that's a nice remark for a sister to make. I've no illusions about Brother Willie. And I shouldn't think you had any about Wenda after this. Let's not talk about her, shall we? 
All right, I'm all for dropping unpleasant subjects. No, I didn't mean that. I know. What you're trying to say ever so politely is, Molly, mind your own business. All right, let's talk business. You rented my princess for Hearst Park on Saturday. And I don't forget to come to see her do a trial gallop tomorrow. Yes, of course. Eight o'clock? Right. Molly. Yes? You know, some people don't approve of a woman trainer. Well? I just want to go on record that, well, I think they're pretty good. I know. What you mean is that as a girlfriend, I'm a pretty good trainer. What's the vote? Well, I might be able to save him for the stud, but it's doubtful. Meanwhile, he goes on suffering. You know that as well as I do. Have you told Lady Molly? Yes. What did she say? So it was a pity to prolong the agony. I see. Well, you'd better get it over with as quickly as you can. Very well, Captain. Yes, darling. Like to pay some of them? The yeah, air minister says it's going to get... Four frocks, four hats, four pairs of shoes, What's four... What's all that? You must have some nice clothes to go with your new morning coat. If you think I'm going to go on shelling out my good money just to... Don't the worry. I... I'll do what I always have to do. Shell out some of my own. I can't spare any coupons, either. They're not needed in Paris. Why, what's Paris going to do with it? We're flying over next week. Who said so? I did, darling, just then. What is it, Hawkins? It's Captain Anson on the phone, my lady. I'll take it upstairs. <laughs> Good morning, Hawkins. Lord Panford at breakfast? Yes, sir. Lay another place, will you? Good morning, Willie. How's the boy? What are you lugging that thing out here for? It's a delicate hint. Well, you don't want to stay here again, surely. Well, I'm afraid I'm forced to, old boy. They've cut off my electric light. Well, I don't mind, of course, but I don't know what Wenda will say. Where is she? Uh, upstairs, talking to Gary on the phone. Why the whistle? Well, work it out for yourself, old boy. It'll be good mental exercise. Ah, Hawkins, thank you. I'm glad to see the service is just as good as ever. Well, I will if you say so, Gary. But do you really mean it? Yes, of course I mean it. For the Coronation Cup. I thought Silver Queen was running. I saw Garth last night. He says she won't be ready till Ascot. What's its name? My darling. No, but what's the name of the horse? My darling. Gary, don't keep on saying my darling. Tell me the name of the horse. But I've just told you. My darling. And when that, you can have a nice little flutter on her. All right. But heaven help you if she lets me down. I can't afford to lose another penny to John Dory. Don't worry. You won't. Goodbye now. Bye, darling. What is it this time, Tony? Electric light. Why don't you give up your cottage and move in here permanently? Why, oh, say steady, old girl. Well, I'd love to, Wenda, but it would be hardly fair on the rest of my pals. I'm sure your pals would like to see you comfortably settled. Yeah. Gary, give you any hot tips? One, but it's a secret. I bet it is. Eh? Hey, what's that? With you. Go away. Oh, no, you don't. You can't bully me or I'll give him a notice. Get out. You're fired. You can't do that. Why not? It's my turn to give you notice. Oh, all right, all right. Only go away. Now, look, Captain. It's time somebody spoke up and told you a thing or two. For ten days now, you've been moping like a girl who trusted a sailor. Well, it won't do, see? Wilderness was a good horse. We're all sorry he had to go and break his leg like he did. Of course, me too, Bob, as a matter of fact. But you can't go on fretting yourself about it forever. So what? So you've got to snap out of it, that's what. Look, I brought the cards. You and me's gonna have a little game of gin rum, you no, see? No, no, we're not. I don't want to play cards. I can't know what you want. You pick up your hand and get on with it. Hillcott, why do you always win? Because I cheat, of course. Nobody ever got nowhere sticking to the straight and narrow. You just get stuck in it. One of the mugs. 
And you let your pals down, too. And I've let John Dory down. I've let him down properly. Yes, and me, too. You told me the Silver Queen wasn't running. I said she wasn't. Yeah, and now she is. And I'm out five bob. That's twice my limit, you know. My darling may win tomorrow. May win? What sort of talk is that? That's the old trouble with racing, the uncertainty. You ought to cut it out, you know. Not racing? No, the uncertainty. Yeah. Look, if my darling wins the Coronation Cup at Epsom tomorrow, she'll be a much shorter price in the Ascot race, right? Right. Now then, Silver Queen's a good sprinter, but she ain't a good stayer, right? Right. Now, the Gold Cup's a certainty for my darling, because the extra mile will suit her, but not Silver Queen, right? Right. Well, what? Well, why don't you see that my darling doesn't win tomorrow? Why don't you see that she comes in fourth or fifth, and you can back her at Ascot to win a fortune? Oh, well, God, you're incorrigible. <laughs> I'm giving you good advice, Captain. <laughs> Andy Lynn will be here any minute, you know. Andy will? Why? I just phoned him and asked him to come over, said you'd... Uh... I'd like to have a bit of a chat with him. Hillcott, do you know what you are? I'm your pal, Captain, you know that. Not for free. Three? Oh, yeah, you've got... Oh, you count. Sixty-four. Hillcott, you're a liar. I know I am. I admit it, don't I? Are you trying to lead me astray? <laughs> Somebody's got to where you go broke. I wouldn't have far to go, I can tell you then. I know, Captain. That's why I want to help you. There's nothing I wouldn't do for you. You were blitzing each game to down 1,500. Look, do I want to see the finest man in the world go down the drain just for the one of a bit of common? I don't want to see him. Right. I'll show him in. I don't want to see him. Come on in. Mr. Handy Lynn. Hillcott, you blithering scoundrel. Get another bottle of whiskey. That's the way to talk, Captain. Evening, Captain. Oh, Andy. Sit down. Andy? Tell me something. If I asked you to stop my darling tomorrow, what would you say, hmm? I'd say, could be done. It's not everyone that could manage it, mind you. But there aren't many things that do I can't... you mean you'd do it? I would. It's your filly, Captain. I'll ride her any way you want me to. You'd win a fortune at Ascot if I'm not in the first three tomorrow. Yes, I'm... Uh, I'm in a hole, Andy. Sure, we all get in them. Yes. And if we've got any sense, we pull ourselves out of them. He's got a fine pile of bills over there. And if somebody don't pay some of them soon... Hello? Who's that? It's Lady Molly. Listen, Captain, we don't want her in here now. I know. I'll tell you not at home. Don't be a fool. Well, I'll take him into the kitchen anyhow. Come on, hurry up. And mind, Captain, not a word to her. Come on, in there, quick. Evening, Hillcott. Where's Captain Anson? In there. Hello, Gary. Hello, Molly. Help yourself. No, thanks. Oh, what are you looking at? I was just wondering if you would be as cut up if I were killed. I don't know what you're talking about. Don't you? Do I rate as high a place in your affection as Wilderness did? I can't see why everyone has to keep on about Wilderness. He's dead, isn't he? Let's forget him. Right. But you do happen to have 18 other horses, and one of them does happen to be running tomorrow. Well, what? I came to see if you had any instructions. Instructions? What are you getting at? Nothing. Gary, is something wrong? No. No, everything's perfectly all right. Just so long as you keep your nose out of my affairs. But your horses are my affairs, surely. You train them. I'll decide what happens to them after that. Naturally, but all I wanted to know There's was... There's nothing else for you to know. I see. Good night, Gary. Oh, no, no, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Molly. Molly. Well? Please don't go. I'm sorry. All right. Oh, I thought you'd gone. Andy, what are you doing here? Just having a chat with the captain. What about? Well, that's my business. Gary, what's going on? Uh, just a little party, a stag party. No, no, Hillcott, tell her the truth. You want to know everything that's going on, don't you? All right, you shall. I've just been arranging with Andy here to pull my darling tomorrow so that we can all make a packet when she runs at Ascot. Now, Captain. Oh. 
Now, Gary, you're drunk. You don't know what you're saying. Come on, Hillcock, give me a hand and we'll get you to bed. Now, wait a minute. Whose house is this? And whose filly is it, eh? You just stop being so high-minded and tell me that. You're too pickled to know what you're doing. Andy, say good night and go home. Do I carry out your orders, Captain? Yes, of course you do. All right, I'll be going. Good night, Captain. Good, good night. night, Miss. You can rely on me to see you lose your license. That won't bother me. I'll clean up enough to retire on. Good night, all. Gary, now you can't mean this. Oh, yes, I do. I've been a mug long enough, but now I've learned some sense. And if you don't like it, you can do the other thing. I think you'll change your mind in the morning. And I wouldn't want your hangover either. But if you don't, then you can take your horses out of my yard and find yourself another trainer. All right. The next time I'll get a man. Good night. That's torn it good and proper. She'll spit on you, you know. Oh, no, she won't. I know Molly. She might be a bit high-minded now and then, but she's still the second best woman in the world. <laughs> Who's the first? As if I didn't know. Uh, Wenda, of course. Oh, that reminds me. I, I've got to let her know. Wenda, yes, I... I told her to back my darling tomorrow. I, I've got to tell her to cancel the bet. You can't cancel bets, Captain, you know that. Yes, John Dory will cancel the bet for Wenda. Hey, get her on the phone. I can't. Why not? Because she's in gay parade. Oh, yes, yes, so she is. Uh, no, no, she's not. She, she's on the plane home by now. I've got it, I've got it. I'll, I'll wire the airport. That's the best idea. Excuse me, sir, you're in reverse. Uh, oh, thank you, Hillcock. Oh, uh, thank you. Lady Penniford. I'm Lady Penniford. Thank you. Good. Have you got anything to declare? Yeah, I, I saw that was from Gary. What did he say? Nothing to do with you, darling. Now, look, I may be a fool, but I'm not an absolute fool. That's a matter of opinion. Look here, if I... Pardon me, are you travelling together? Yes, we are. Did you make any purchases while you were abroad? No, nothing at all. No silk, jewellery, clothing, nothing to declare? I'm afraid not. Have you got anything to declare? Nothing at all. Well, open this one. This one? No, this one. Oh, that one. <laughs> Tony, we're here. Uh, but this is my place. Yes, dear, I know that. Give me your key. I just want to find out if your electric light's working yet. Well, I'll go and see, but I'm sure it's a complete waste of time. Don't disturb yourself. Johnson, get Mr. Trail's suitcase. Yes, ma'am. Willie, I'm sunk. Huh? I'm sunk. Who? Oh. Isn't that a nice surprise? You can sleep in your own house tonight. Thank you, Wendy, darling. Good night, Tony. Happy dreams. Thank you very much. Hubert, what have I ever done to you that you should treat me like this? It's a lovely day for racing. I hope Lady Molly don't interfere with our little plan. What plan? Oh. Hillcott, I, I didn't do anything stupid last night, did I? You was more sensible than I've ever known you to be. I did do it, didn't I? Yes, I sent a telegram. I must put that right at once. No, 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 I can't do that. Uh, I'll send a note. Now, look here, Captain. Get me some note paper, quickly. But, Captain... No, no, it's all right. I, I've got a better idea. But, for heaven's sake, Captain, think what you're doing. Uh, lend me a pencil. All right. Here. That looks to me like a five you're writing on. Looks to me like a hundred. You've gone crazy. All right, you needn't bother breathing down my neck. 
I'll show you what I say. This is what I won for you on the Oaks. My telegram was just a drunken joke. Of course my filly will go all out to win. Now you're going herring over with this on the gardener's bike. I have an art, Captain. You've got to catch them before they leave for Epsom. Give this to Lady Planiford yourself. All right. Oh, and uh, tell her to destroy that telegram. Could get me warned off. Well, go on, go on. What are you waiting for? My pencil. Oh. That's how I got it. We're leaving in half an hour. I'm going to get ready. Yes, dear. Wenda. I hope we didn't offend poor old Tony. What does it matter? Well, I like him, you know. I shall miss not having him around. Willie, Tony is not going to stay with us anymore. He sponged on us for the last time. Is that finally understood? Yes. Yes, dear. home like you? Round to the back, you. Listen, chickadee, I've got a personal message for Lady P from the captain, and I've got to deliver it into her own lily-white hands. So kindly conduct me to save. It's all right from behind, too. Morning, Willie. How are things with you? No good lugging that thing in here, old man. You had it. Is that so? Mm. Wenders put her foot down with a thud that could be heard for miles. Uh, well, I've got something very interesting to show you. It's the wire that Wenda got from Gary at the airport. She threw it away. But I picked it up. Decided, my darling. We'll not try meeting tomorrow. Too risky. So cancel our arrangements. Sure to meet off at Ascot. Great discretion is central. Love and kisses, Gary. Oh! Well, I felt it was my duty to show it to you. You understand it, I suppose. Of course I understand it. It means it's too risky for them to meet today, so they're going to try and bring it off at Ascot. Right here, the proof, in plain English. Oh. Oh, uh, and the captain said, um, would you destroy the telegram? I did when I got it. That's the idea. Always destroy the evidence. Good morning. Same to you, my lady. Willie, be sure not to mention that telegram to Wenda. Why not? Well, it's much better if you don't. I can't see that. You'll look a fool if you do. Shall I? Oh, I say, that would never do, would it? No. No, in that case, I... What are you doing here? They turned off the gas. I'm afraid, Tony, this time it's just out of the question. Oh, well, that puts me in a very awkward position because Willie insists on my staying, don't you, Willie? Yes, I do. So if it's all right with you, I'll go and unpack. What do you mean by this? I mean that this is my house. And if a fellow can't invite a chum to stay in his own house, things have come to a pretty pass. Against my wishes. I've been made a fool of long enough. I don't know what you're talking about. Never you mind. It's time we went. And Tony's coming too. Or isn't there any point in your going to Epsom now? <laughs> Don't forget, our conversation of last night never took place. It's gone from my mind like a dream, Captain. It'll ride the best race you know how to, understand? You can trust me, Captain. I'll win the infernal race if it ruins me. You don't have to worry about that. I'm backing the horse to win, and I'll see that you're all right. Thank you, Captain. There we are. I was just telling Lady Molly how much I like the looks of your filly. I say, this is the coronation cup, isn't it? I keep on telling you I'm not speaking to you. Well, by rights, I shouldn't be speaking to you. That'll suit me perfectly. Will you stop behaving like a bodyguard? I'm going to put some more of my own money on Gary's horse. Which is Gary's horse? Number seven, my darling. I'm backing you. Well, I wouldn't have a penny on any horse of Gary's. Why not put it on a number five, Silver Queen? Unless you feel like going to Tuppence. You know, I, I, I don't like when they're sneaking off like that. Oh, it's all right, will you? Gary's in the ring. Oh, yes. Yeah. 
My dear girl, a bet's supposed to be a bet. First you put money on, then you take it off again, then you... Oh, John, be a dear. You know, you're in my books for 600 pounds already. A hundred each way on my darling, please. Very well. Thank you. Hello, Gary. Hello, oh, John. There goes yours now. She certainly goes down like a winner. Yeah, that's probably she come back like one. Don't you fancy her chances? On this distance, Silver Queen's the danger. But I'll have a couple of thousand, my darling, just the same. Each way? No, to win. Okay. I, I, I'm going to have a bit on what's his name. Two shillings to win what's his name. Well, what is its name? Silver Queen, uh, number five. Don't you wish there was a one shilling window? They're under starter's orders. This is the Norman Gary, darling. You usually stand with my hearty sister-in-law. Yes, yeah, not today, though. Has she been a little bit too hearty? They're both drawn on the inside. <laughs> you know, she's awfully like Willie. I'm not speaking to him today. Why not? Well, he's behaving outrageously. As far as I can gather, he's jealous. Of who? Of you. <laughs> There's no reason. I know that, darling. Seems rather a pity. The race is over there, old boy. I'm not watching the race. I'm looking for Wimba. Break it up now. Excuse me. Are you watching this race or, or some other? Uh, excuse me, sir, but. Uh... I hope so. First, number seven. Oh, Gary, that's my darling. Isn't it wonderful? Second, number five. And third, number nine. Here is a correction. First, number five. Second, number seven. And third, number nine. First, number five. Second, number seven. And third, number nine. Hello. I'm sorry we didn't bring it off. You're not half as sorry as I am. I would have won several hundred. I'm sure Gary will enjoy apologizing. Excuse me, I'm see she's all right. She is a funny girl, isn't she? Never mind, darling. It wasn't your fault. I'd have to get the money back somehow. Yes, I'm sorry today's been such a disappointment. But I'm sure it's only a question of waiting until after. I think we'll be able to pull it off there, all right. Oh, no, you won't. Oh, what on earth's the matter with you? Not so much as some people seem to think. I've got eyes and ears, you know. Willie, will you kindly go away? Don't think you'll pull anything off at Ascot. I shall be watching you every second of the time. Have you been working Every too hard second of the time, I shall be watching you. So Look, don't this is all very don't... unpleasant. Tony, please take him away. Now, come along, Willie, old man. Now, now, come on. Poor fellow. He ought to be in a home. <laughs> I don't think I can stand any more of this, Gary. But he must know that there's nothing going on between us. For some reason or other, he thinks there is. That's <laughs> ridiculous. Would you like her to be? What? Well, would you? Wendy, you know what I feel about you? No, I don't. Tell me. Well, to me, you're just the most attractive, wonderful person in the world. Then why should my being married to Willie make so much difference? Well, in the first place, I can't forget that you might have been married to me. And if you were my wife and said what you've just said to someone else, well, I'd be pretty mad. I should be pretty mad if I didn't. You don't suppose I love Willie, do you? Oh, that's beside the point. Is it? Why? 
Now, it's no good, Wenda. This is just one of those times when you and I don't see eye to eye. All right. Suit yourself. But you'll be sorry. Hello. Is that you, Ducky? Now, listen. I want a tenner each way range more. A tenner each way poker face. Stakes up and down. Any to come. Eighteen pence each way sponge cake. Any to come, shilling each way, mother's boy. Any to come, two bob to win, desperado. Name, Ilcott, nom de plume, opal. Hello, you were expecting me, weren't you? Yes, we always expect you the night before, Ascot. <laughs> Lady Molly's not coming this time, though. I can't say I'm exactly surprised. No, she and the captain aren't what you might call it, off. If you ask me, it seems a pity. Yes. How is he? Off his feet. That's been for weeks. He's in there. Hello, Gary. Hello, old boy. Good to see you. How things? Well, as a matter of fact, they could hardly be worse. First wilderness, then my darling, and a few more of the same sort. I'm just about finished with betting, John. Bad as that, eh? Is it true you're selling your string? Got to. Look, if I don't have to sell this place, too. I'm just about washed up. Don't forget I owe you seven and a half thousand. What's that? I back Sackman for you at Lingfield. Oh, no, you didn't. You've forgotten. Fifteen to two to a thousand. That's very nice of you, John, but you can't make me a present of seven and a half thousand. Oh, <laughs> who ever heard of a bookmaker giving away money? I did. Just now. It's very nice of you, John. But actually, I don't need it. I've still got quite a nice little nest egg. Tonight's the night when I get it back. And after that, I've done with betting. Tonight? Mm hmm You don't mind if I run over to Willie's after dinner, dear? You didn't trust your nest egg to Willie? No. Wenda? Yes. The Anson Pearls. Worth 20,000 quid. I told her that she could wear them until I wanted them back. I've been waiting for a chance to ask for them. Hardly seen her since Epsom. I see. Does Willie object to her wearing your pearls? He can't. Why not? He doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> the crabs in here, old man, is it? Yes, isn't it? Why don't you have the table in the middle of the room? It always used to be there in the old days. Then the Americans came here during the war and they moved it. Seems to prefer some game of their own called scraps. Crap, old man, craps. I beg your pardon? Craps. What on earth are you talking about? It's a game the Americans play. It's called craps. All right, there's no need to lose your temper. No, it's the green, isn't it? I say, look out for the window. You don't think it'll be easier to move the table back again, do you? Well, we can't do it this time of night, can we? No. Captain Anson to see you, my lady. Ask him to come in. He says he wants to see you alone. Really? Excuse me. Say, did you hear that, old man? No, yeah, what? Said he wants to see her alone. Well, he's probably got some private business to discuss with her. Well, very private, if you ask me. What do you mean by that? Nothing, only I'd watch out if I were you. Oh, you would, would you? Well, what's next? Still the green. I told you to watch out. Hello, Gary. What's happened? Nothing. Why? Your message sounded very mysterious. Oh, it was just that I wanted to see you alone. If you're thinking about what I said at Epsom, you can forget it. No, it wasn't that. Something far more prosaic, I'm afraid. I'm broke. Oh, Gary, I'm sorry. The old girl was right, you see. What old girl? Aunt Bertha. You remember what she said? No. I give and bequeath to my nephew Gary the Anson Pearls as a little nesting for the time when he comes to put his last shirt on a horse and loses it. Well, I'm afraid the shirt's gone, and the necklace is all I've got left, so I'll have to ask you for it back. But I don't understand. I always thought the necklace you gave me was a wedding present. Gave you? Oh, Wendy, you're not serious. Weren't you? Well, of course I was. Well, then. I, I told you, don't you remember, that I hadn't come into the money. You said you were going to marry Willie. Then we spoke about the necklace, and I said you could keep it and wear it until I wanted to. You mean you never intended me to keep it? Well, no, no, of course not. Oh, but, Carrie, 
This hurts me, really it does. That a dear person like you, someone who I've loved all my life, should want to go back on a present. You know perfectly well it wasn't a present. I want those pearls and I want them now. But Gary, I haven't got them. Haven't got them? No. What have you done with them? Lost them? Pawned them? As a matter of fact, I sold the pearls. I had to. Willie wouldn't pay my bills. You know how mean he is, and I needed clothes for Ascot, Can so you I... really look me in the face and tell me that you've sold that necklace without even letting me know? Why not? It was mine. It was nothing of the kind, and you know it. That's what you say now. All right. You'll be hearing from my lawyers. <laughs> I'm not serious. I certainly am. It won't do you any good. We'll see about that. Oh, Gary, don't go like this. You know how I feel about you. No, but I know exactly how I feel about you. Oh, and how is that, may I ask? If you want to know, ask her. What's the meaning of that? Oh, Willie, I've never been so insulted in all my life. You mean Gary insulted you? But you won't let him get away with it, will you? No, dear, no, of course not. Thank you. No, certainly not. Never mind. <coughs> I can hardly believe it. Even of Wenda. You've always been right about her. You can say I told you so if you want to. That won't help. No, it certainly won't. I'm absolutely and completely ruined. Oh, don't be absurd. My darling will be worth about £10,000 if she beats all the Queen on Thursday. Well, she had better. But, Gary, she almost made it at Epsom. This extra mile ought to make all the difference. Do you think so, Molly? I think we've got a good chance. Well, then, let's drink to the only thing that stands between me and the bankruptcy court. To my darling. And the Ascot Girl Cup. Like Eskid, is Excuse me, Captain Anson. Lord Fallingham would like to speak to you for a moment. Yes, of course. Where shall I find him? In the steward's room with Sir John Garth. Wait here for me, will you, Molly? Come on, be a moment. I don't like it a bit. Well, there'll be some perfectly reasonable explanation. You'll see. I hope so. Ah, oh, there he is. Hello, Anson. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. I hear that you want to speak to me. Yes, I think you ought to know that the Jockey Club have instructed us to hold an inquiry tomorrow into the running of your horse at Epsom. Oh, why? What's the matter? You'd better have a look at that. Did you actually send it? How on earth did you get hold of this? Someone brought it to us. Male or female? Will you be good enough to answer my question? Yes, I sent it. The night before the Coronation Cup. I'm afraid you'll have to explain this tomorrow, you know. The suggestion is, of course, that you arrange to have your filly pulled. I'll be perfectly frank with you. I did. You did? Yes, I was very upset at having to have my horse wilderness destroyed. And that was rotten luck. And I, uh, well, I, I got a bit drunk. Indeed. I'd have done the same. While I was drunk, I told my jockey to pull the filly and I sent that wire. The next morning, of course, when I was sober. You changed your mind. Well, I was horrified, naturally, when I remembered what I'd done. I instructed the jockey to go all out to win. You saw the race. You know that horse wasn't pulled. Oh, that's perfectly true. The jockey might have disregarded his instructions. Will you be able to prove that you changed your mind? Yes, luckily I can. I sent a message to Lady Paniford saying the telegram was only a drunken joke. It was written on a hundred pound banknote. What? On a hundred pound note. You wrote on a banknote? Yes, it belonged to Lady Paniford anyway. I'd won it for her. Well, we'd better arrange to call Lady Paniford tomorrow. Thank you, Anton. Willie, it was unforgivable of you taking that telegram to the stewards. On the contrary, it was my duty. Duty to whom? To the public, of course. The man who performs a public duty of that sort is just a public mistake. Oh, do you think so? I'd advise to tell him about it at the club. Oh, look, I, I, I don't think I should mention it at the club. Well, I don't know about that. It might be my idea of a public duty. Oh. Oh. We're very much obliged to you for coming, Lady Penniford. Not at all. Won't you sit down? Thank you. How are you, Gary? All right? Yes, thank you, Wenda. 
all things considered. Now, Lady Pennyford, do you remember receiving this telegram from Captain Anson? Why, yes. I'm afraid I do. I was greatly shocked by it. It wasn't like Gary at all to do anything that Just was... a moment. What did you understand from this telegram? Well, that I wasn't to bet on my darling. Because... Well, because... Because what? Oh, oh, please, this is all very difficult for me. Yes, I'm very sorry, Lady Penniford, but the point we want to clear up is this. Did you receive a further message from Captain Anson contradicting the telegram and saying that his filly was going all out to win? No. Are you sure? Quite sure. I wish I had. You did get the message, Wenda. You know you did. Hillcott gave it to you. It was written on a hundred-pound note. On what? On a bank note. Hillcott gave it to you. But, Gary, I don't understand what this... Oh. Oh, dear, I ought to have said I'd got it. I should have lied, shouldn't I? No, Lady Penniford, you shouldn't. This is a serious matter, and we want the truth. And I want you to realize that Captain Anson's future may depend on your answer. Did he send you a subsequent message telling you the telegram was a joke? No. Captain Anson, do you want to ask Lady Penniford any questions? Yes, one. Why did you tell my man Hillcott that you destroyed the telegram? Oh, Gary, how can you put me in this position? You know that I never had any conversation with Hillcott at all. I give up. Thank you, Lady Penniford. I can't understand why he's in there all this time. Well, there's Wenda. Why not ask her? Yes. Wenda, what's happening? Is something wrong? It all depends on what you mean by wrong. I'm afraid your friend Gary's got it coming to him. I did my best. I'm sure you did. Andy Linsar. Lynn, we want to ask you a few questions about the running of my darling in the Coronation Cup. Yes, my lord. All you have to do is to tell the actual truth. Captain Anson, I must ask you to remain silent. Did you ever receive any instructions from Captain Anson to stop the filling? Oh, no, my lord. How could I? Another stride and I had the race won. Were you at Captain Anson's house the night before the race? No, my lord. I was in London. I could bring a dozen witnesses who'd be glad to... Lie, just as you're doing now. Have I said something wrong, Captain? I told you to speak the truth. Captain Anson. I've spoke the truth and nothing but. The Captain's always run his horses straight. He's never said a word to me about any funny business. So your story is that he never at any time gave you instructions to prevent his filly from winning? He did not, my lord, on my solemn word of honor. Well, that'll do, Lynn. Thank you. Thank you. Lady Molly Panifor. Oh, please sit down. Thank you. Lady Murray, do you know whether or not Captain Anson ever gave any instructions that his filly should be stopped in the Coronation Cup? His instructions to the jockey were to do his darndest to win. We're speaking of the night before the race. Captain Anson has admitted that he told Lynn then that he... Did he tell you that he'd had too much to drink and didn't know what he was doing? He claims to have been drunk, but that is hardly... A... He put it right next morning. Can you prove that? Of course I can. He told the jockey. In your presence? No. But I know that Captain Anson would never dream of doing... Lady Molly, can you or can you not adduce any proof that Captain Anson... Surely it's up to you to prove that he's guilty, isn't it? Please don't keep interrupting. We are trying to arrive at the truth in the hope that... Lord Fallingham, I've told you the truth. Captain Anson is just as straight as any of you are. That will do, Lady Molly. Thank you. You may go. Look here, Sir John. Please, you're not helping him. I'm sorry. Uh, Captain Anson, did you back your horse in the Coronation Cup? Yes, I had 2,000 pounds on her. To win or place? To win. Who with? John Dory. Rain, we ask Mr. Dory to be good enough to come here for a moment, will you? Very good. Did Captain Anson have a bet with you on the Coronation Cup? Yes, sir. What was it? Two thousand on my darling to win. Oh, there you are. That settles it. No man's going to put two thousand pounds on a horse he knows can't win. Uh, just a moment. Mr. Dory, would you mind uh, having a look at your books? Of course not. And they won't help you. 
This transaction doesn't appear in them in Captain Anson's name. Why not? He only decided at the last moment to bet. Five minutes before the race, I placed the money in the ring myself. In your own name? Yes. So that we've only your word for it that it is Captain Anson's bet at all? That's all. But it was Captain Anson's bet? Yes. You're quite sure? Quite. Captain Anson's a very good friend of yours. Yes. Has Captain Anson paid? Not yet. Thank you, Mr. Doring. Thank you. Captain Anson, would you mind waiting outside for a few minutes? I'll take my oath he's straight. You can't get away from this telegram and his own admission. But there's something behind this, something we don't know. We're not concerned with what's behind it. He says that he countermanded his instructions to the jockey and told Lady Penniford so. She says he didn't, and in my opinion, she's speaking the truth. Very reluctantly. Yes, charming woman. The heart, very unlike her sister-in-law. Yes, she's as hard as nails. Precisely. It's all right, Molly. Don't worry. Just can't be helped. But it's all my fault. I had lost my temper. I think God's on our side. I imagine he feels he has to be, with his filly running against us. <laughs> Daddy, what will he do? I don't know, but I can guess. I'll stand by you, whatever happens. Will you come in again, please? Wait here for me, darling. Captain Anson, I'm sorry to tell you that we are not satisfied with your explanation. No? No, sir. There will be a special meeting of the Jockey Club to consider your case in due course. But meanwhile, we must insist on your not running your filly, my darling, tomorrow. I see. In our opinion, you haven't cleared yourself of this child. Unless you can do so before runners have to be declared tomorrow, your horse does not run. Is that quite understood? Yes, sir, of course. Quite understood. I'm sorry, Anson. I know you are, Garth. Thanks. So am I. Well, I've often wondered what it felt like to be warned off. I shall soon know. Gary, they couldn't. They could and they will. If only there was some way of proving that Gwenda had that hundred pound note. Yes, but there isn't. I didn't even take the number. Do you suppose the note went back to the bank? Why not? She could easily rub out the message. I suppose there's no chance of your friend Hilcott. Oh, no, I trust my old burglar pal. Hilcott! Did you want me, Captain? Yes, you remember that message on the hundred pound note? Of course I do. You wrote it with my pencil. Here it is, the very one. I've marked my shirts with it for years. <laughs> I pinched it off the milkman. Did you want something? No, oh, no, I just wanted to make sure that I didn't dream it. Yeah, she's got it all right, Captain. It went from my hand to hers. Here, wait a minute. Let's see that pencil. Here you are. You can buy them for fourpence. At least you used to be able to. Gary, Molly, look. Yes, it's indeliable. Indelible. Then the message on the back of the note wouldn't rub out. And if it won't rub out, it hasn't gone back to the bank. If she's still got it, I'll bet it's in that tin-pot safe of hers. Would you like me to go over and swipe it? I can do it, you know. It's a job I'd enjoy. Don't be a fool. You've had two convictions. You get penal servitude. Whatever you say, Captain, but I could open that safe by breathing on it. Could you teach me to open it? Well, you're a bit slow sometimes. You know, take all of five minutes. Let me know if you want a lesson. I'm going... Well, not to do a burglary. No, no, just to talk to her. Utter waste of time. She'll never give it up. And you can't force her to. I'd like to go over there with an axe. So would I. But this is a case of finesse. Let's sleep on it and try and think of a way. You're not going. I think I will. I'm very tired. It's after 11. Good night, John. Good night. I'll show you up. Don't mind if you look after yourself for an hour or two, dear John? Me? I'm going to bed. Good. I hope you're not going to do anything silly. What do you think? Will you please go? Not till I get back that note. Don't go on repeating like a parrot that you want that hundred pound note. It's in that safe. I'm sure it is. Oh, no, it isn't. I burnt it. You burnt a hundred pound note? Don't make me laugh. You couldn't bring yourself to burn a Hapley stamp. There's no need to be insulting. There is 
when I'm dealing with you. I tell you, you're wasting your time. Who's that? Shh. It's me, Tony. You can't come calling this time of night. I'm in bed. Listen. Shh. I thought you ought to know that I was right after all. What? About Wenda and Gary. Nonsense. It was a horse. Shh. He's in her room now. Tony, I can see a joke if it's funny. But I must say I see nothing funny in waking me up in the middle of the night to tell me there's a horse in Wenda's bedroom. No, no, Gary's in there. Shh. What? Yes, he went up a ladder. I've taken it away. You go and see. Yes. I tell you, I... Linda, Linda, open this door. Now, then, you've woken Willie. Open the door. Open what is it, Willie, darling? No, you open the door. I, 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 I make it down. Would you mind, Gary? He seems to want to come in. You are in a hurry, darling. Did you want something? What does this mean, eh? What does it mean? Not what you think, Willie, I promise you that. Red-handed, absolutely red-handed. Nonsense. You, you puller of horses. That's ridiculous, and the proof of it's in that safe. Oh, no, it isn't. I'm certain it is, and I want to show it to the stewards. A banknote with a message written on the back saying that my filly was going all out to win. I said it over by Hillcott the morning of the race. Is this true? Of course it isn't. I never got such a message. She said just now that she'd burned it. Don't be silly. How could she burn something she hadn't got? Exactly, because she did get it. I know she did, and Hillcott swore put it in that safe. It's there now, I'll bet you anything. Well, we'll soon find out. Um, what's the word that opens this thing? I wouldn't dream of telling you. Well, then, get out of bed and open it yourself. I'm quite comfortable here, thank you. I insist on having this safe open. Do you hear? I insist that you open... Oh, it is open. Nothing here but jewelry. Maybe in one of the cases. Don't bother, Willie. It isn't there. Of course it isn't, because I never got it. I know you didn't. You made the whole thing up, didn't you? No wonder there was a ladder. Well, so long, Willie. I'm off. I think everything's OK. Then you better think again. Don't forget I caught you red-handed. Oh, will you? Then you tell some silly lie to try and cover it up. Well, you can tell that story to the divorce court. You hear? I'm sick and tired of Don't be such an idiot, Willie. You've got it all wrong. Will both of you please go away? And another thing. Oh, I... shut up, Willie. I've had enough. Good night. So long, Wenda. Oh, I say, this is going to be funny. The ladder's not there. Who's that? Tony? What on earth are you up to? Just paying a social visit. Are you all right? Fine, thanks. How are you? In a hurry, I'll watch you. Yeah. Tony? Be sure and put that back where it belongs. Good night. Gary, we've got it. That's wonderful. But supposing they find out who did it? I don't think they will. Hillcott? Pretty smart work, eh? Congratulations, Captain. You soft-hearted halfwit. This might mean penal servitude. Not without any previous conviction, surely. Well, he's had two already. Well, it'll be my first. I never did a burglary before. You mean you? <laughs> I taught her in a couple of ticks, Captain. She's just cut out for the job. Been wasting her time training horses. But, Jerry, it's really quite easy. All you do is listen for a little click. <laughs> <laughs> just what the doctor ordered here, got. I thought you'd think so, sir. Now all I've got to do is to wave this in old Fawlicum's face. Oh, no. Willie must be the one to wave it. He took the telegram. He must take the note that clears you. John's right. Well, oh, here's to our burglar. Now, you leave this to me. I'll deal with Willie. Good night. Oh, well. Waste not, want not. You did see Willie this morning, didn't you? Yes, I did, and it's all fixed. He should be here now. Well, he isn't. I can't find him anywhere. No one's seen him, and Wendy's sitting in the box alone. Well, did you ask her? Yes. She had a grand time telling me she didn't know. Oh, what an idiot he is. And he swore he'd be in good time. Yes, you know, I'm getting worried. It's less than an hour to the race. I can't declare the filly a runner until I'm cleared. I could kill Willie. He's only alive now because they don't keep any blunt instruments at the hall. Four 
bottles of bubbly, my lady, with the captain's compliments. Really? For his lordship. Hillcott, as a matter of curiosity, what were you doing last night? Well, now, that's very nice of you to ask me, lady. As a matter of fact, I spent a quiet little evening at home. You didn't by any chance commit any uh, burglaries? Now, let me see. Wednesday. No, I can't remember doing a single one on Wednesday. I'm not too late, am I? Why leave it as fine as this? It's all Wendell's fault. What on earth have you been doing? Looking for my trousers. Wenda hid them, you know. She tried to stop me coming. I, I wouldn't have come in either if it hadn't been so serious. Do you think anyone will notice? No, of course not. Now, Willie, you know, I hate appearing conspicuous. I wouldn't like it. Now, look, Willie, there's not a moment to be lost. Oh. Oh, what's the matter with him? Willie! Here, here, I want a word with you. Good morning, Willie. How's the boy? I say, what awful bag. Don't you try and change the subject. You were wrong. You hear all the time. Come on, Willie, please. Willie, there's no time to stop talking here. Come this on. This is the last time I talk to you in the middle of the night. Or any other time. Now, listen, Willie. Will you go at once and show that bank note to Fordingham? I've got exactly three minutes to declare my filly a runner. Okay. Well, where is he? I'll show you. And I'll get her saddle. She must be getting restive. Right. Ah, Fordingham. I don't know what right you have to come bursting in here. I want to see you on a very urgent matter. I have a very urgent matter here. The first race starts in ten minutes, and that gives me just... But last... this will only take a moment. I want you to look at this. There. Oh. There. I fail to understand. This appears to be a banknote. It is a banknote, but it's the banknote. It's the one that proves Gary's innocence. You see, I made a terrible mistake. I didn't know about this. Where did you get this curious document? Uh, my sister brought it to me this morning. Exactly. I imagine she and Anson cooked it up together. Ridiculous. There's nothing in it. And now, if you'll excuse me. No, this horse must be allowed to run. I mean, Gary's such a good chap, and he... Well, he can't be ruined just because I acted under... Uh, under almost... a sense of duty, I understand. I made a mistake. You're making one now, I assure you. But you must believe it. Any fool would... I mean, no, that's what he... Now, look here, Penniford, I understand your feelings. You're sorry for your friend. Well, so am I, too, in a way. He used to be a good fellow. But it's quite obvious that he concocted this thing last night in a futile attempt to substantiate it. Oh, no, no, no. He sent it to my wife when he said he did. Does your wife admit that? Yeah. Oh, no, she doesn't. Precisely. If your wife admitted having received it, then, of course, we might. But in any case, it's too late now. The filly won't have been declared a runner. And I'm appalling you late. So if you'll be so very good as to leave me... No, please, you... you, you Penifer, must... you heard what I said. Yeah, but surely I can... If that's enough, Penifer, good day. A bit fine, aren't you, Captain? Sixty seconds more and you'd have missed it. Yes, I know. Thank you. I am glad to see your fill is running. How did you manage it? We got hold of the message on the banknote. We got it from Lady Penniford last night. Oh, well done. She wasn't exactly speaking the truth then. Well, uh, well, no, <clears throat> not exactly. Well, I'm glad you managed to satisfy old Fallingham. I knew there wouldn't be any difficulty. What's the meaning of this, Anson? I don't understand it. Take your filly out of the ring at once. Why did you let him do this? I understood from Anson. How dare you declare the filly a runner after our instructions yesterday? I thought I was clear. What, by that cock and bull story, Penniford, what made nonsense, sir? Never in all my 40 years of racing have I known the steward's instructions so flagrantly disregarded. Your horse is out of the race, sir. Get number seven removed from that number board at once. Uh, number seven, my yes. lord. Be quick about it. Uh, very good, sir. Like two to one, Silver Queen. Even Spidale. Number seven is withdrawn. Number seven is withdrawn. I'm sorry, madam, my darling's been withdrawn. And I hereby declare that I did receive the message on the hundred-pound note at the time Captain Anson says I did. All we will do is to sign it, and we'll take it along to old Fallingham. I'm so sorry you've had all that trouble. Of course I won't sign it. It isn't true. I agree with Lord Fallingham. You're both being perfectly ridiculous. Well, I suppose that's that. You know what we need? A brain. 
No offense, of course. I know. And mind you, I'm not speaking to the fellow, really, but when a fellow needs a fellow, it's different, isn't it? Come on, you help me fight him. You know, it was really your fault that Gary got into this jam. Well, now you can jolly well get him out of it. Willie, you said that before. Have you got any ideas? Shh. Yes. Yes, I have. There, what did I tell you? Now, listen. Hmm? Would you like a drop more, my lady? Not for the moment, thank you. Champagne, miss? I want a word with you. You'll catch you. Better wait outside. Now then, Wenda. What are you to be taking your poor little horse home? Oh, excuse me, Molly. Wenda, I'd like a check in settlement of your account. What, now? Yes, now. Don't be silly. I haven't got my checkbook with me. Here's a check form and a pen. Come on, sign it. Otherwise, I'll have you blackballed at Tattersall's. This is outrageous. I insist. Very well, Mr. Dory. Dorian Co., 725 pounds. And you sign it. Thank you very much. Well, I made my last bet with Mr. Dory. That'll be a great shock to him. As you were saying, Molly, before we were interrupted, I'll tell you. Of all the me, despicable things, anybody... There you are. That's the best I can do in an hour. He'll cut its mouth. Yes, let's go and find old Folium. Hmm? No, no, it's got to be witnessed. He's right, you know. Signed in the presence of... You're first, Willie. And so now you know. Would you mind going now, because I find you bore me? Let's go, Gary. Gary, we just want Molly to witness Wendell's signature. What's this all about? I did it, Captain, but don't judge me by it. I can do much better sitting down. Hubert, you're terrific. <laughs> we'll talk about a rise later. Goody, goody. <laughs> really, Tony, I've had about enough. No, no, don't leave. You're acting as if you're out of your mind. But one always does when one's in love. I'm afraid I'm not interested in your love life. But you're it. Oh, Wenda, Wenda, darling, don't you know that I've loved you for years? Not falling him. Falling him, falling him. I've got it, I've got it. What is this, Paddyford? I've already been pestered once today. Ah, uh -huh. but look at that. Good when did Lady Paddyford sign this? Oh. <coughs> it was signed just now. Well, Captain Anson, I can only say I sincerely regret that this information was not in our hands earlier. We owe you an apology. There can be no question about it. In due course, uh, yes, sir, in but due uh, course, you will receive a written statement, withdrawing the charges absolutely and embodying our regrets. Yes, sir, but it's but not the, the first time that a man's been victimized by a woman. Yes, sir, but can my filly run? Impossible now, unfortunately. Why is it? She's declared a runner, the jockey's weighed out. And your fellow look at the number board. Well, they change it once, they can change it again. Unprecedented, you can't play ducks and drakes with a public like that. Well, what right have we to prevent this filly from running? None whatever, but it's too late now, the horses are at the post. I'll tell Waterford and we'll have the number put back again. Leave it to me, Gary. You find Andy, I'll get a saddle. Well, that's that. Trust old Tony. <laughs> or can I? Why do you think I was always inviting myself to stay? To be near the woman I love. You kept very quiet about it. Yes, and it was torture, torture, Wenda. But now, with uh, Uncle Gregory not expected to live... Who's Uncle Gregory? Oh, he's the one in Australia with all those sheep farms. They call him the Sheep King. And I'm his only relative. Really? It's all right, Gary. We've had the number put back. Good. Oh, Silver Queen! Oh, my darling, a lave Silver Queen! Even money, Here, even money, my darling. My darling, even £50, 31. Even £10, my darling, 8, 9, 1. I'll take six of all, my darling. I'll take six of all, my darling. I'll get my breath back one day. Good luck to you, Andy. Good luck, Andy. I hope his shoulder holds out. So do I. There he goes. Oh, darling, keep your fingers crossed. When did you first find out that you were in love with 
Uh, <coughs> well, I, uh... Oh, it's you. Everything okay? Yes, like the same. I hope. Tony, give me some more champagne. I shan't bother to watch. Well, I shall. Too smart for you, that's all. Do you realize that I've lost every penny I possess? Well, you won't get any debts paid by me. No, I, I, I've put an advertisement in the paper. Then you can give me a divorce. I'm sick of it. Delighted, my dear, delighted. And when I'm free, I shall marry Tony. Oh, you will, will you? Yes. What car did you bring? A little two-seater. In that case, I'm afraid there'll be no room for you, Willie, darling. Come along, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 